When you are planning an exhibition, it is important to think about the space you have to work with. Your space will determine much of your design and may also help you decide how best to tell your story. While we would all love to have the space of a British Museum gallery, most of us will be working with walls or a small room. If you have a wall to work with, you may find it easier to tell your story as a timeline, or if your story centres on a family, a family tree might work best. If your story includes events spread over a continent or the world, a map may be a good way to tell your story. What if your story contains lots of facts and numbers, such as the casualties of the First World War? Infographics, highlighting and explaining key facts and statistics in visually striking ways, are a great way to explore otherwise complex detail. Timelines, family trees, maps and infographics can all be just as informative as blocks of text, while having the advantage of being more visually interesting and often easier for audiences to digest. If you have more room to work with, freestanding display boards are an option. These are particularly useful as they can be easily moved around and can be set up anywhere. Your school may even already have some. You can even use the arrangements of your boards to help tell your story in a particular order or to highlight opposing views. More space may also allow you to display artefacts, models or paintings, all effective ways to enhance your storytelling. However, displaying these will have space implications. Curators have to work with the space they have, and so be careful if you plan to exhibit objects that you have the space to do so safely, both for them and for your audience. It is also important to think about how visitors will navigate your exhibition. Make sure your visitors can comfortably view and find their way around your exhibition, and avoid bottlenecks and tight corners. Think about how many people can gather around your display comfortably at any one time, and ask whether they can follow your story without getting in each other's way. If you are using freestanding display boards, think about how easy it is to navigate between these if you are in a wheelchair or are pushing a buggy. The more space you have and the more boards you use, the easier it will be for visitors to not know where to start or in what order to read your panels. Consider an introductory panel or flyer that explains how best to view your exhibition, and make sure you have clear labels, numbering, or flow arrows to help guide your visitors from A to B to C. Introductory panels are also good opportunities to say who has curated the exhibition, and give thanks to those who have helped put it together. Finally, think about the space you'll need after your exhibition ends. What is going to happen to your exhibition? Where are you going to store it? If you are going to dispose of your exhibition, be sure to keep a digital record of your work and to recycle materials where possible. Thinking about space prior to starting work on your exhibition will save you lots of time in the long run. The space you have to work with will shape your design and your approach to the story. While smaller spaces may seem limiting at first, view these instead as an opportunity to be creative in your design and storytelling.